The Jack Benny Program, presented by America's largest selling cigarette, Lucky Strike. That's it. American. Lucky Strike. First again with tobacco men. Yes, first again with the men who really know tobacco. The independent buyers, auctioneers, and warehousemen. And a recent impartial survey reveals that more of these independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. Remember, these are the experts who, year after year, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. And for their own personal smoking enjoyment, they choose Lucky Strike. So let this overwhelming preference of the tobacco experts lead you to real deep down smoking enjoyment. Just light up a Lucky and puff by puff you'll see. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco and this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means a world of smoking enjoyment for you. Yes, you'll like Lucky Strike. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is Halloween, and in Beverly Hills, as in communities all over the country, the little goblins have already started through the neighborhood playing trick or treat. Well, this is the last house in the block. Before we go to the next street, I think we ought to put all the stuff we got in one big bag. You go first, Bobby. I'm Joy. Bobby and me changed masks. Uh, well, it doesn't make any difference. Well, let's all empty our pockets and see what we got. I'll go first. I got a piece of fudge, a stick of gum, and two lollipops. I got an apple, some popcorn, two cookies, and a chocolate bar. I got some lemon drops, a peppermint stick, and a donut. I got a Tootsie Roll, a packet of... <laughs> package of Lifesavers and a can of Strongheart. <laughs> hmm, dog food, huh? Hey, fellas, we're wasting time. Let's get over to the next street and knock on some more doors. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah go. let's go. Hey, Bobby, there's that new kid that moved into the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Hey, Butch. Hiya, fellas. You playing trick-or-treat, too? Yeah, I've been to every house in the neighborhood. You have? Hey, what do you got in that big gunny sack? A walnut and two jelly beans. <laughs> ah, Beverly Hills. <laughs> Say, Butch, I want you to meet the treasurer of our club, Mr. Jack Benny. Hiya, Mr. Benny. Hello, Butch. You can be very proud that you've met Mr. Benny. I can't? Why? You've just shaken the hand that knocked out Gene Tunney. <laughs> Gosh, Gene Tunney. With that old right cross to that kisser in the third round. Right, killer? Well, I, uh... I know that you kids have a tendency to exaggerate. It, it wasn't the seventh round. <laughs> That's what it was, huh? Tell Butch what Mr. Benny went to England this year. Yeah, Mr. Benny was the most decorated athlete in the United States Olympic team. <laughs> Gee, what if that was Ian? Are you kidding? In the same afternoon, he won the 100-meter dash, the pole vault, the discus throw, the broad jump, the high hurdles, and the diving contest. Holy smoke. And then he had to run 12 miles back to the Palladium to be in time for his evening performance. <laughs> Gee whiz! And it wasn't easy running with all those medals on. Oh, boy, what an athlete. Yeah, but Mr. Benny doesn't want anybody to know it. He even wears big pads in his coat so his muscles won't show. <laughs> and not, on, not only that, Butch, Mr. Benny's in the movies, too. He made a picture called... Oh, come on, fellas, let's go. <laughs> You know, Halloween will be over before we know it. Now, let's go ring some more doorbells. Okay. Hey, kids, this is the street where Mary Livingston lives. Mary Livingston? Isn't that the girl you said was nuts about you? Yeah, yeah. I'm going over and call on her. Listen, I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Okay. okay. Gee, I hope Mary's maid is out tonight so she'll open the door herself. Boy, will this mask fool her. <laughs> Trick or treat? <laughs> Oh, Paul, 
Pauline. It's probably some kid. I'll go and see. Mary, it's me. Oh, for heaven's sake. Pauline, come out from under the bed. Oh, did the wolf man go away? It's not a wolf man. It's Mr. Benny. He pulled, pulled his toupee down over his face and cut two eyes in it. <laughs> yeah. Say, Mary, do you mind if I come in and sit down for a few minutes? I'm worn out. Worn out? Why are you so tired? I don't know. I guess I haven't gotten over the Olympics, you know? What? I mean, I walked over from Olympic Boulevard. <laughs> Oh, boy. Let me get into that chair. Say, Jack, I received an advanced copy of the Saturday Evening Post, and there's a big article in it about you. There is? Let me see it. Here you are. Oh, yeah. Say, look at that picture of me. Say, I look pretty good, don't I? A lot of color in my face. Put on your glasses. That's an ad for Campbell's tomato soup. <laughs> oh. You were looking at a tomato. Thank heaven. I thought I had a stem growing out of my head. <laughs> your picture on the other side. Oh, yeah. And there are my writers around the swimming pool. <laughs> what are you laughing at? They look like four gophers coming up for air. I can't understand it. I pay them enough to get their teeth straightened. <laughs> Gosh, my feet hurt. Mary, do you mind if I slip off my shoes? No, go right ahead. Okay. <clears throat> ah, that feels better. You know, Mary, we've walked all over the neighborhood. Jack, I know that's a nice bunch of kids who belong to the Beavers Club, but you're too old for them. But, Mary, it's good for kids to have a hero, you know, an idol, someone they can worship. I know, but what kind of an excuse are you going to give them Wednesday when they find out you weren't elected president? <laughs> that's what worries me. The kids won't believe it, you know. They'll demand a recount. Oh, well, I'll think of something, you know. <laughs> Oh, the beavers are calling me. I gotta go. <laughs> All right, Claire. I'm glad you stopped by. Yeah, good night, Mary. Good night. Gee, Miss Livingston, did Mr. Benny have to go away so soon? Mm, don't worry, Pauline. He'll be back. Well, how do you know? He forgot his shoes. <laughs> Here. Thanks. <laughs> Fellas, I'm coming. Now, let's go ring some more doorbells. Yeah, and let's hurry. I gotta be home by 10 o'clock. Me too. That's what I told me old lady. Butch. Butch, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Now, what kind of language is that for a beaver? Told me old lady. Told me old lady. <laughs> Kids. Kids, beavers. Did you hear that? I didn't hear anything. Neither did I. But you must have heard it. There was an echo when I said, Oh, no. No, I'm not going to say that again. Say what? Oh, me only. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even say it then. <laughs> What's the matter with me, anyway? Oh, well, come on, kids. Come on. Let's play some more trick or treat. Huh? Hey, Joey. I'm new here. What goes with this jerk? <laughs> <laughs> He ain't no jerk. He's just tired from the Olympics. Come on, come on, Beaver. Don't lag back. Let's go. Gee, kids, we've walked about three miles since we left Mary's house. Hey, Mr. Benny, isn't this the house where Dennis Day lives? Yeah. Hey, let me go up alone. I want to scare Dennis's mother. You kids wait here, I think I'll look in the front window first, see if Mrs. Day is home. Good, it's open, too. Oh, Dennis! <laughs> Dennis, where are you? I'm in the library, Benita. <laughs> Dennis, stop imitating Ronald Coleman. Now go sit down and finish your dinner. Okay. Say, Mother, why are you carrying that baseball bat? In case some fathead comes to the door to play trick or treat. <laughs> Hmm. Dennis, what happened to all the mustard that was in this jar? Oh, I used it to play a Halloween trick. A Halloween trick with mustard? Yeah, I smeared it all over your new nightgown. <laughs> what? You smeared mustard on my new nightgown? Not so loud. You're not supposed to find out till you go to bed. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, Mother, what are you mad about? I was a good sport last Halloween when I found my suit tied in knots and a dead mouse in my pocket. Oh, that's horrible. Who played a stupid trick like that on you? I did. <laughs> mm. Every 
day they're getting babies mixed up in the hospital, but I had to get the right one. <laughs> now, Dennis. Dennis, you've got to rehearse your song for the program. Yes, Mother. Getting out of here. I wouldn't go near Mrs. Day with that baseball bat in her hand. Hey, Mr. Benny, did you scare Dennis's mother? No, nah, there was nobody home. But I thought I heard somebody singing with a beautiful voice. Oh, that was me. <laughs> Down among the sheltering palms of uh, uh, my honey. Uh, my honey. <laughs> hey, kids. Hey, kids, here's a friend of mine coming down the street. You hide in the bushes, and I'll put on my mask and scare him. Okay. <laughs> Oh, boy, when he sees his mask, he'll jump out of his skin. Boom! Hello, Mr. Benny! <laughs> oh, oh, hello, Mr. Kitzel. How'd you recognize me? <laughs> Who else wears button shoes? <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah. Well, Mr. Kitzel, uh, what are you doing out on the street? You know, don't you know this is Halloween? Yes, I know. This is the night when hobgoblins and spooks and monsters and witches are roaming the streets. Well, then what are you doing out? I'm looking for my wife. <laughs> oh. You know, we went to the movies and we got separated by the crowd. Oh, the movies? Now, what picture did you see? Johnny Belinches. <laughs> No, 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 Mr. Kitzel. Mr. Kitzel, that's Johnny Belinda. Oh. And wasn't Jane Wyman wonderful in that picture? She played such an unusual part. You no, know, she was dumb and she couldn't speak a single word. Ooh, 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 to have a wife like that. <laughs> oh, your wife talks a lot, huh? All the time, all the time. What does she talk about? Who listens? <laughs> You know, I hope someday, you know, tonight especially, that she gets home early so she can straighten up the house. Some kids tipped it over. <laughs> tipped over your house? Yeah. It must be awfully small. Small? In the morning, if you get out of the right side of the bed, you're in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. If you get out on the left side of the bed, you're in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And if you get out of the front of the bed, you're on the sunset bush. <laughs> You have got a small house. Huh? Yeah. Well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. It was nice uh, meeting you again. Likewise, I'm convinced. <laughs> hey, kids. Hey, kids, Beavers. Beavers, where are you? Well, here we are, Mr. Benny. When you were talking to that man, we rang some more doorbells. Yeah, we're dividing up the stuff we got. We dumped it out on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> 
We got a lollipop, a stick of gum, a penny, a bottle of Coke, and a Tootsie Roll. I'll take the Coca-Cola. I'll take the Tootsie Roll. I'll take the lollipop. Now it's between you and me, Mr. Benny. Which do you want, the stick of gum or the penny? <laughs> Well, I, I guess I'll take the stick of gum. Okay, get your foot off the penny. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Say, kids, look at while we're in this neighborhood, let's go over to Phil Harris's house. Okay. <laughs> Here we are, boys. This is Mr. Harris's house. Now, look, you kids go up to the door, and I'll hide here behind these bushes. Huh? Okay. You know, fellas, this has been an awful tame Halloween. Yeah, let's have some fun. Let's tip over Mr. Harris's trash can. Okay, here goes. buy anything in cans? <laughs> kids. Now, kids, go, go, ahead, go ahead and ring the bell. Okay, I'll ring the bell and then we'll all hide. I guess Mr. Harris isn't home. His wife answered the door. Yeah, look at her standing there. Isn't she beautiful? Well, who is it? Who rang the bell? She's beautiful, all right, but she sure got a deep voice. Ah, oh, there you are. Hey, you boys out celebrating Halloween? Uh-huh. Trick or treat. Oh, trick or treat, huh? Well, which would you kids rather have? We'd rather have the treat. Okay, here goes. Oh, won't you come with me to Alabama? There we'll meet my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and broiling ham. Bell! That's what I like about the South High, you, Jackson. <laughs> You with these boys, or are you working solo? <laughs> Look, I'm with the boys, and we're having a lot of fun playing trick or treat. Well, I bet you can't wait till Easter when the fuzzy wuzzy bunny rabbit hides a dead a bit TA. <laughs> Never mind that, Phil. You just don't know how to enjoy yourself. Maybe you're right. Come on in, Jackson. Hey, come on in, kids. Okay, come on, Beavers. Come on. Phil, is Alice home? No, Alice took the children to a Halloween party and I had to stay home with her money. <laughs> well, if you ever need a sitter, call me up. <laughs> so you're, you're here all alone, huh? Yeah, but I don't mind, Jackson. I've been sitting here looking through my old picture album, you know, when I was a kid. Can we see them, Mr. Harris? Sure. Hey, look, there's a picture of me in school when I was in the first grade. See it? Gee, what a cute bunch of little kids. But the teacher looks kind of familiar. That ain't the teacher, that's me. <laughs> oh, yeah, you were kind of slow in school, weren't you, Phil? Yeah, the teachers didn't seem to like me either. They were always picking on me. Did they make you stand in the corner? Listen, Junior, I stood in the corner so much I was the only kid in class with a triangular forehead. <laughs> triangular forehead? Gee, how'd you get rid of it? He massaged it till the point went to the top. <laughs> Say, hey, Phil, this picture here, that, that's Remley, isn't it? Yeah, that's Frankie. <laughs> that picture was taken 18 years ago, the day he got out of school. Oh, on graduation day. Well, why isn't he wearing a cap and gown? Look, Jackson, the school Remley went to, you didn't graduate. You just had to be able to get over the wall. <laughs> oh. Incidentally, he never would have made it if I wasn't there to give him a boost. <laughs> Phil, I think you're just... Oh, uh, excuse me a minute, Jackson. Hello, this is the residence of Phil Harris and Alice Fay. And... Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't know it was you or I'd have given you a top billing. <laughs> no, I'm not alone. Jackson dropped in with a bunch of kids, so I brought out my album and we got to talking about old times. You know, effervescing. That's reminiscing. <laughs> hmm. I know, honey. One of the kids just told me. <laughs> what did you call me for, baby? Uh, oh, okay, I'll be right over and get you Well, we've got to run along, Phil Okay, Jackson, see you tomorrow So long, kids Bye, Bye. Bye.
Gee, that Phil Harris is a nice guy. But I wish his wife, Alice Faye, was home. Yeah, she's beautiful. She certainly is. <laughs> she's got the bluest eyes I've ever seen. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Come over here under the street light. <laughs> there. Now, come on, kids. We've got about five more houses. Now, now, look at where we go next. Hey, I know a good Halloween trick. What? Well, there are five of us. Let's go tip over Don Wilson. No. <laughs> well, we mustn't do that. Look, but I know what. Let's go over to Mr. Wilson's house anyway. Okay. Come on, Beavers. Come on. It's getting late. All right, kids. Here, here's Don Wilson's house. Gee, it's dark inside, but the door is open. Look, at, I better go in alone first. Okay. Now, wait here. Don. Don. Hmm, it's so dark in here. Don! Don, where are you? Jack! Jack, we're in here, me and the sportsman. Oh. Well, Don, what are you doing in this big house with, with all the lights out? We're telling ghost stories. <laughs> Jack, we have a wonderful Halloween song we want to do. You have? Yeah. There are a few places where you join in, and there's one place where we want you to do a weird, crazy laugh. A weird, crazy laugh? All right, let's start. Well, we have to wait about 10 seconds yet. Why? We can't start till 9.26 bull of a witch time. Oh. <laughs> All right, but look at we've only got about, we've only got about five seconds more. Ready, everybody? on a hill full of spooks but we will frighten them away take off my toupee come with the wolves we will prowl this is our night to howl and we'll hoot like an owl hoot hoot we are the goblins who know where the warm breezes blow and tobacco leaves grow lsmft that's a smoke for me so take a tip from a ghost use tobacco they told it's the one we like most. Huff, oh, oh. Now? Go! Oh. Now? Yes! Go! <laughs> Aren't we the ones? Whoops! Look, there goes the skeleton. I'm shaking like gelatin. Before you get frightened, you better start lighting the lucky, and then we can go. So take a puff and you'll see, and we're sure you'll agree. And say lucky's for me. They are first again with Tobacco Man. Now, if you hand us our broom, we'll be leaving here soon. And go haunting for F.E. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Well, Jack, uh, maybe we could use it as a commercial on the program sometime. No, and it would scare all the people. Well, I better go. The beavers are waiting for me. So long, Don. So long. Ouch. Hmm. Imagine putting a mouse trap in a fruit bowl. If he doesn't want people to eat his fruit, why doesn't he keep it locked up like I do? <laughs> hey, kids. Kids, come on out. We'll... Kids. Now, where did they go? I better give the beaver a call. Oh! <laughs> Gee, that's the beaver's distress signal. I better hurry. Coming, fellas! Coming! Gee, I wonder what happened. I hope it's nothing serious. Well, there they are behind that fence. What happened, fellas? What Stevie happened? Stevie tore his pants climbing over the fence. Yes, and I want to go home. 
Oh, come on, Stevie. That's nothing to cry over. What's so bad about tearing a hole in your pants? I was carrying my rabbit there and he got away. <laughs> I want to go home. Oh, don't let that rip in your pants spoil our fun. Then I'll climb over the fence and I'll fix it for you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, so long, fellas. <laughs> I better go home, too. Well, we all better go home, huh? Okay, Mr. Benny, but before we break up, we want to say something to you. Yeah, what is it? What is it, man? For he's a jolly good beaver, for he's a jolly good beaver, for he's a jolly good beaver, he's a jolly good beaver. Is he only 39? <laughs> ah, thanks. Thanks a lot, fellas. Thanks a lot. See you at the next meeting. Good night. Good night. Ah, oh, gee, what a night. Such fun. Ah, it's great to be young. La 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 well, it, it won't hurt to try. Trick or treat? I'm sorry, but I'm only the watchman in this bank. <laughs> oh. Can't understand it. Some people never want to get into the spirit of this thing. Eh? <laughs> well, I might as well go home, I guess. La 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 Hop, hop, till you drop Skip, skip, don't you trip Step on a crack, you break your back Oh, darn it, I stepped on one Man, nobody saw me La 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 for I'm a jolly good beaver, for I'm a jolly good beaver, for I'm a jolly good beaver. Why don't I pay my dues? Why don't I pay my dues? Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... A recent impartial survey covering all the southern tobacco markets reveals Lucky Strike, first again with tobacco men. Yes, more independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. Excuse me, but who are these tobacco experts? They're the independent auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen, men with years of experience buying, selling, and handling tobacco. And it's important for you to know that more of these independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. You've heard the survey results. Now here's what Mr. James Alfred Walker, veteran independent tobacco buyer, who's attended more than 3,000 tobacco auctions recently said. At market after market, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy good ripe tobacco, that smooth, fragrant, fine tobacco that makes a real fine smoke. So it's only common sense for me to pick Lucky's for my own cigarette. Smoked them for 17 years. A Lucky Strike smoker for 17 years. And remember, Mr. Walker, like you, looks to the cigarette he smokes for enjoyment. Real deep down smoking enjoyment. So light up a Lucky yourself, and puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. Yes, puff by puff, pack by pack. You'll like Lucky Strike. Good night, everybody. <clears throat> this is NBC, the national broadcasting company.